Will is going to give me a lesson in some HVAC pipework techniques. We're going to try and connect some copper tube to this aircon unit, aren't we? That's it. Obviously, slightly different techniques to plumbing and heating. So, to connect onto an indoor and an outdoor unit, we uh, usually use what's called a flare nut. So. Okay, you so the first difference I noticed there is if that was a, a plumbing fit and that would be a flat face. Yeah. And that's like a tapered face. That's it. So this tool here, this is called a flaring block or flaring tool. So you probably see if I can wind that out, you'll see that like cone up there. Yeah. And as it sort of. Is that one of Madonna's down, boobs? Yeah. <laughs> sure, if you can make that out. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that, that's what you, you're going to put your flare nut on. You're going to uh, put your pipe in the block, and as you spin down, it's going to it's going to open that up into like a cone shape. Okay. And then we're going to connect that onto the unit. We're going to tighten it up to a certain torque. We have a torque wrench, and then that's going to give us our. Are these two different sizes of pipe? They are, yeah. yeah. So, so that, that looks one, like uh, a piece of 10 mil copper to me. What size is? So that's half inch. So what's that? About 12 mil, something like that. Right. Okay. And that one's a quarter. So. I think that's about nine mil, something like that. So, but you, you can have a go with a with a half inch, right? So, okay. Always put your nut on first. So the nut goes on first because we're going to expand that end of the pipe, that's and then it. you won't get it on after. First thing we need to do, you need to deburr the pipe. Pretty similar to plumbing, so you'll yep. deburr the inside of the pipe, and then we also need like a flat face on the end of the pipe. So you get these on the back of pipe, so you'll sort of scrape what's sticking up on the end off as well. So we deburr, but we don't do this. So what's this? So basically, you, you, as you've deburred now, you see there's a little bit lot like, sticking up on yeah. the side of the pipe. You basically like before and then you can carry on. So almost like a knife, you would like scrape. Okay. You scrape it so it's a flat face. Um, so just I suppose one extra little step. Yeah. yeah. Is that because obviously the pipe is becoming um, yeah that's going to be a mating surface. So yeah. obviously you want that to be as flat as clean as possible. Okay, so once prep you, the pipe. Once you've deburred, you get your flare nut, you get your flaring tool, and then we're going to start producing the flare. That's your flaring block, mate. So we have got. What did is I say? Three eighths. Did I say three eight? I think I said half inch, but it is three eight, yeah. Yeah. So you want to go that way in, mate. So through the three eight. Yeah. And then see that slider there? Yeah. Basically, if you push that over and then pull your pipe back, you want it pushed. Oh, so it just hits that? Yeah, right, okay. Right. When you've got it like pushed off, squeeze the block like closed. That's it, mate. We'll get that in a bit. <laughs> right. This then. Do you I need to hold this the whole time? Is that... It'll stay to a certain extent. Okay. So you slide that all the way up that way, and then yeah. that there, mate, you can start feeding that on. Okay. Basically, that mark just past the 3 8, you want to line that little arrow so to that. there, and then start tightening up that. That's it. Just keep going all the way so you can't tighten it anymore. That'll pull your block together. Okay, right. Once you've got that tight, you can start spinning that, and that's going to start producing your cone. It, once it's produced the cone, it'll click, and you'll, you'll feel it click, and you won't okay. go, well, you can go some more, but you won't do any more work, so. That's there we it, go. Perfect. Now just spin, it, that. spin that one first, all the way back out, so the cone comes all the way back up. Yep. See it then that one, all the way back out, and then the tool should drop out. And then just we'll pull it apart. Now, hopefully, right, that should. That's it. So that now fits perfectly on there. That's it. We don't need a washer. No washer. No Some paste. people, no paste. Some people like to use oil. You can get like a flare nut oil. Yeah. Um, just a. Sometimes to help the mating surface, sometimes to help the nut spin round freely without sort of twisting the pipe round, yeah. but you don't have to, so you just tighten it on like that, and then depending on which size pipe or which size flare nut you got, you basically have to tighten that up to a certain torque setting. So this is to be to a torque That's depending it. on, is yeah, that yeah. depending on what you're transporting through the... The pipe it or? depends on manufacturer really. So okay, like, manufacturer. Let's just say this is your tachy, for example. If you look in the install manual, it will say like three eight pipe, you need to tighten it to say fifty newton meters. So yeah. you'll tighten that to fifty newton meters, which I've already done for okay, you. Okay, right? cool. And then, as long as you follow the direction of that arrow. Yeah. Sometimes it's best to like, grab like, yeah, okay. grab 
grab that with that hand and then again you'll feel it click when you've when you've tightened it up. Did that click? I don't know. That's it, that, yeah, that click there that's done. And that's it. Cool. And that's how to produce a flared connection. Similar, well same thing on the indoor unit mate, as well as the outdoor unit. So yeah, that's how we connect our, our pipes mate, onto a unit. Do you want to have a look at joining the pipes together? Our method yeah, we're going to try some brazing. We don't, yeah, yeah. We don't. We tend not to use couplers like you do as much because I suppose just to limit the amount of, of sold or brazing. So yeah. we'll expand the copper out, and then uh, which I know you do actually. So I call it swaging. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah, same thing. So we'll expand. We'll expand one of the pipes, push the other pipe in, and then braze that up. Right? So, yeah. Or we'll get the I'll get the tube expanders and we'll have a look at that. Okay, so this weird tool kind of reminds me of Robert more when it's like that than when it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go. Yeah, we're going to join two pipes together. Like I said, I know it's probably more standard to use a coupler fitting, isn't it? But we tend to until we get up to our bigger sizes, we tend to do away with the fittings as much as we can. So. Yeah, this funny tool, I think like I said earlier mate, if you you can obviously see that cone coming in and out. Yeah. We've got 3.8 pipe, so that's a 3.8 head. If we screw that on the end of there, you can you can obviously see that that's just expanding the end expanding. of the pipe. Do we need to prep the pipe again? Yeah, obviously you want to want to ream deburr your pipe again. This is soft, soft copper, so we're all right with this, we don't have to anneal it, we don't have to heat it up, mate, you can just... Okay, so we've already learnt two things, just get that done. Okay. There you go, mate. So Stick that goes on the end there. there. That's it, mate. And then we've just got to pump it out. That's it, you squeeze your two handles together. What you usually do is squeeze it together, pull it out, just move it round, sort of one position, just because of the uh, teeth. One more squeeze, mate, and then you should be able to get that. In the end of there, fingers crossed. Okay, so that's very similar to a swage, and then that joins Perfect. in. Perfect, that's it, mate. So then now that needs brazing. Yeah, so we braze it off, which again, slightly different to soldering. It's 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 a similar thing, but it's at a higher temperature. So um, this size pipe, you'll get away with the with the map gas. So we we'll get a turbo torch, some map gas, um, get some brazing rod, mate. And we'll, yeah, you can have a bash at giving it a braze. Cool forward to having a go at that. Okay, so what we've got here, brazing rod. Brazing rod. Uh, Depending on the size of pipe, do you have a different thickness of brazing no, rod? No, mate, it's, to be fair, it's, all, it's the same until you get to what we call silver soldering, which is when you're trying to solder copper to a different type of metal. Okay. And then you do what you call silver soldering. So basically the brazing rod, I think it has a much higher silver content. So this, you can see, right, this, the silver content is 0.2%, so it's, it's pretty much nothing. But, yeah. Uh, so I've seen you guys do this before. We've got to get the pipe cherry red. That's, that's the, yeah, that's just the before secret, it gets it? sort of cherry red, you can start, um, you can start feeding and you see, you don't, So when I do uh, soldering, it's capillary action, it sucks it in. This one, you've got to actually push it and feed it in. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it will. Obviously, the idea is you need to fill that cup. Um, so... Uh, Soldering, you could, you could argue with soldering, you could probably hold that in the same place and yeah. then just touch it and it'll, it'll flow around. Yeah. You might be all right with this size pot, the bigger you get though, you really you need to move your flame around as well to, to um, get the beast in. So.
that look all right? The pipe's actually... Yeah, <laughs> the pipe's been because it's not supported, but yeah, it's... Uh, that's not a bad attempt, mate. Obviously, um, I think I said earlier, under normal practices, like when we, basically when we braze something, see all that black like carbon on the outside? Yeah. You get that on the inside of the pipe as well. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about these units here, they carry refrigerant around these, around these units, mixed with a bit of oil. What happens is all the oil picks up all that sort of carbon and yeah. it's bad for, um, it's bad for all the uh, yeah, components inside. So what we do, we flow a little bit of nitrogen through the pipe, just a, just a small fraction of nitrogen. It pushes away that oxygen and then you don't get that oxidisation on the inside of the pipe. So. so what do you do about the outside? Do you clean that up now with some steel wool or something? No, we don't. Leave it? Leave it like that, yeah. It's and completely that alien to what you know. Well, I guess because you've not used any flux, it's not going to turn green, is it? So no, it doesn't turn green, mate, at all. No. So it's, it's more about the look so of this, it. So well, this, this, all the time it'll be lagged. There's no circumstances when it doesn't get lagged unless ah, you're talking okay. about refrigeration. So we get armour oh, flex lagging on our pipe and okay. obviously you're not going to see any of this. So here's a question for you. In my trade, if I did that on a 50 mil pipe, mm. and then I decided I'd done it wrong, I need to change something, I'd sweat it out, and I could clean it up and do it again. Can you? You can, yeah, you can. You can unsweat joints, yeah. obviously. It's, it's just a, a much higher temperature, mate, that's all. It's probably a little bit harder than, than solder, obviously. You can probably see there, to get it running, to get that uh, brazing yeah. one running, obviously, you're probably talking about six, 700 degrees before that starts to melt. Yeah. So, yeah, it can be done. It's just a, probably a little bit, a little bit harder, but... Essentially, right? yeah, that's how you, that's how we join two pieces of uh, copper together. We tend not to use fittings, you know, like elbows and stuff. It's not, it's not the norm to use an elbow just yeah. to try and eliminate, that, you know, the, the amount of brazes that we got. So the pipe works bent as much as possible. Yeah. Obviously, the bigger the pipe you get, the, um, the harder that is. But yeah. Cool. Yeah. Essentially, that's how we, that's how we join two pipes together.